Next Monday, May 29th, it's Memorial Day, but it's something else, too. It's what would have been President John F. Kennedy's 100th birthday, a big moment for those who revere and admire the youngest man ever elected to the office of president and a man who only served 1,037 days because he, of that traumatic afternoon in Dallas in 1963. The JFK legacy, however, lives on. And, and here to talk about President Kennedy's legacy exclusively with CNN is Caroline Kennedy. She's President John F. Kennedy's daughter and also the former U.S. ambassador to Japan. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank it's, you. It's, it's quite nice. The JFK Presidential Library and Foundation is set to unveil a special video message this evening um, to commemorate the 100th anniversary featuring your children, JFK's only uh, grandchildren, um, you're giving us graciously this first look at it. So why don't we roll this video and then we can talk about it afterwards. Okay. It would be my father's 100th birthday. I've thought about him and missed him every day of my life. But growing up without him was made easier thanks to all the people who kept him in their hearts, who told me that he inspired them to work and fight and believe in a better world, to give something back to this country that has given so much to so many. I remember hiding underneath my father's Oval Office desk when I was little and sitting on his lap on the honey fits. He would point out the white shark and the purple shark who always followed the boat, although I could never quite see them. He said they especially liked to eat socks and would have his friends throw their socks overboard, which I loved. President Kennedy inspired a generation that transformed America. They marched for justice. They served in the Peace Corps, in the inner cities, in outer space. His brothers carried on that work, fighting against poverty, violence, and war, championing human rights, health care, and immigration. As my father said in his inaugural address, this work will not be finished in our lifetime. It's up to us to continue to pass these values on to our children and grandchildren. One of the defining relationships in my life is with someone I have never met, my grandfather, President John F. Kennedy. It's a little odd to be connected to someone you don't know, especially when everyone else has access to much of the same information about him that you do. Throughout my life, I have been able to connect with my grandfather through the study of history, which I know he loved, both studying his life and studying the eras and patterns that fascinated him. To me, that is where he lives, as a historical figure rooted in the past, but also as a person connected to so much of what came after him, through his writings and from the stories my relatives have told me. But while my grandfather had reverence for the past and the lessons it could impart, he also knew that America was a country where change was possible, where we aren't bound solely by tradition if we understand the past with which we are breaking. I'm inspired by my grandfather's sense of equality, his courage in naming the injustices in American society, and his call for action. His words and his ideals mean so much to me and to the world we live in today but we are still faced with tremendous inequality and injustice from voting rights to our criminal justice system and mass incarceration. My grandfather would be proud of how far we've come as a nation since 1963, but he'd have been the first to tell us that we have a long way to go. I hope everyone, regardless of age or party, will remember what President Kennedy told America decades ago. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. President Kennedy was elected on a platform of challenges and not promises, not for what he would offer the American people as president, but what he would ask of them. My favorite speech is the one that President Kennedy gave at Rice University, where he makes the case for sending a man to the moon. He said that that challenge was worthwhile, not because it would be easy, but because it would be so hard. My generation will inherit a complicated world with countless unsolved problems. Climate change is just one of them but it's the type of challenge I think my grandfather would have been energized about and eager to solve. He cared deeply about the environment, about science and technology, and he recognized that only if America leads the world in solving global problems can we make sure that it's done right. From that speech at Rice, and from the space program he helped launch, we can learn a simple but important lesson. Great challenges are opportunities, and it is each generation's responsibility to meet those challenges with the same combination of energy, faith, and devotion that President Kennedy and his contemporaries displayed decades ago. I know that we're up to the task, but we have to demand action from our leaders, and we have to vote. As his family, we're so proud of what my father stood for during his life, and how powerful those values remain today. I hope that these reflections on President Kennedy's life and his influence on those of us who share his legacy will encourage people across the United States 
to look at challenges in their own corner of the world and seek solutions that heal, lift up the forgotten, and make a difference in the lives of others. Thanks for watching. Powerful video. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I think it was, a, it was a labor of love for me and my children, and I think they uh, each spoke really so eloquently to what um, this legacy means to them. Why a video message as a way of commemorating? Um, I'm obviously coming, you know, his, his, your father's 100th birthday is coming up Monday. I'm sure there, was a lot, there were a lot of people wanting you to talk, wanting your children to talk. Uh, well, as he becomes part of history, I think um, it's important to, to show sort of what he still means to us as a person. And I think, um, I think each of my uh, kids had a different slightly take on it, but there's a lot of emotion there, and I think that probably uh, is something that we could share better on camera. The, um, I love that story about your dad telling you about the white shark and the purple shark following you and making his friends throw socks in. <laughs> to, it's, such a, it's such a great corny dad right. <laughs> joke. But I, I do wonder, hearing it, like, um, is it difficult having your dad be this icon that the rest of us feel like we have a sense of and we have a take on and he's part of our lives in a way? And you actually knew him. Well, I think really he sort of, growing up, he was sort of part of everyone's life. Um, and so that was a very special and unique thing for me. But I think it really... It meant a lot, and I think it made it a lot easier. Um, and I had so many relatives, obviously, as well. Uh, so, so the fact that people would come up to me every day and say, you know, I got involved in my community because of your father's inaugural speech. And even when I was in Japan, people were still telling me that they had memorized that speech, that they were so inspired by President Kennedy's vision of service and of American leadership uh, that, that I think that really kept him alive. There aren't a lot of inaugural speeches that people are still quoting from, right. I mean, when you think about it. Um, why was it important to have your children in it? We don't often see Rose, Tatiana, and Jack. Um, they're, you know, they're kind of, they're, pub they're, they're private figures. Uh, well, I think the point here is that, um, that he is a historical figure. 100 years is a really long time. Uh, but I think his legacy and his values are timeless and they live on. And we want to encourage younger people uh, today who are still very curious about President Kennedy um, to connect with those values, to connect with his message of justice and service uh, and courage and so and innovation and experimentation and, um, and the belief in America. Uh, uh, so they, I think, are the best people to take that message forward into the 21st century. Your daughter, um, I believe it was Rose, said, uh, I mean, it might have been Tatiana, actually, that, that uh, Growing up, um, she'd never even met him, so she learned about him the same way that I learned about him in school. Um, what did your kids ask you about him when they were growing up? Um, I can't, well, now they're older, so, um, so I think that they were both interested in anything that I remembered, um, which are mostly childhood memories, so when they were little, um, we could talk about those things and hiding under the desk or my pony or my pets. Um, and I know when my Uncle Teddy came to talk to their classes, he would always talk about all the pets that had lived in the White House, things like that. Um, but as they got older, I think they really became interested in the issues and their relevance today. So many of the issues that we, uh, that are now on the, on the, in the headlines had their roots in the 1960s, whether it's um, working through multilateral institutions like the UN or the environmental movement. And, um, civil rights obviously inspired the human rights movement around the world. So I think that um, th that really uh, it is studying history really isn't just about the past. It's really about what kind of a world do we want to create for the future. Your dad was so erudite and proud of his intellect and his and his wit. What do you think he would make of politics today? That's uh, maybe a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think that, um, again, I, I went back, actually, and I was looking at a speech that he gave right before he became president. And he said, well, history will judge us by four qualities, uh, courage, integrity, dedication, um, and judgment. So I think that that's how he would judge politics today. And, and I think you know, everybody can make up their own mind. One last question, and that is, you don't do a lot of interviews like this about your father. Is it tough to do? Uh, well, it's, become, it's, it's a lot easier to do with my children. Uh, and I think um, I'm so proud that they are, you know, proud of, of his legacy. And I think having a chance to share it with them and with an, another generation makes it, um, it makes it a lot more 
fun for me or enjoyable. Well, it's an inspiring legacy, and we're so honored that you came here to talk to us about it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. That's it for the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. I turn you over now to Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room. Thanks for watching.